And this plays a single player and takes about 30 to 90 minutes to play, but this is a campaign style game where you're discovering and making decisions, and I don't see any reason why you couldn't play this in conjunction with another player or even multiple players in order to help make those decisions together and solve the puzzles that this game offers. And the way that this game works is that players are going to be exploring the world through a location booklet. Each of the pages offers an isometrical view of that location and players will be able to interact with different areas of that image depending on the numbers that they find there. And if on that page you see a letter followed by a number, that means that you can look up that reference in the location booklet and that will lead you to a new location. So for example, if you wanted to go into this building here, you could just turn to the page with M07 in your location booklet and that will bring you to that new location. But you can also see some other options as well up here with M03 and then M02 in the bottom corner that will take you to those different respective locations. But any numbers on the page that don't have a letter associated with it are an opportunity for you to interact with that location on the page. And this is my absolute favorite part of the game because I really love how this works because you're going to have your own set of actions out on your own player sheet. You'll be able to expand those throughout the game, but then each of your actions also will have a number associated with them. So let's say that speak was associated with the number one, then you would combine your speak action number with the number that you see on the page in order to create a new number. So in this example, if you were to speak to this character, you would combine those into 138. And then you'll just look up that number in the campaign booklet and that will tell you the outcome of that action. But another interesting aspect here is that this also expands to any items or spells that you might find throughout the game because those will also have a number associated with them just like the actions and in exactly the same way you can combine those with the different numbers that you find out on the board to get a different outcome. So for example, let's say that you're able to capture some sort of rare bug in the game you might want to come back to this character here with the bug net and then combine the number associated with that bug with the number that is in his speech bubble in order to see what sort of outcome will come of that. Each of the locations can also have some hidden numbers scattered throughout the page, for example on this message board, and depending on what you're interacting with there might be some limitations with the available actions that you could perform there. And of course the results can vary depending on which action you decide to perform as well as what actions you've already performed in other areas of the game. But of course not all the locations you visit will be quite as safe as a town or shop and any of the locations that you visit that have some sort of danger associated with them will have an encounter letter located at the bottom of that page. And whenever you see that you're going to go through the encounter deck and find the letter matching the one on the page then that's going to reveal what sort of enemies you're going to be encountering there. And each of these enemy cards can also depict different numbers that are associated with that enemy and the enemy can also change between different numbers depending on how you interact with them and these numbers work very similar to the numbers that you find out on those location pages because you're going to be combining those numbers with your spells, items, or weapons in order to interact or attack that enemy. And some of these combinations will work better than others, while other combinations might not work at all. And you'll find that out when you go to look it up in the campaign booklet and it tells you whether or not you were successful in your attack, or instead if you happen to take some damage, or perhaps something completely different. And some of your attacks might require you to roll a die to determine whether or not you're successful, but you can always spend a focus to guarantee its success, but of course those are a limited resource and you won't want to be using those for every single encounter. And if this one sounds interesting to you, you can go ahead and find the link in the description below and you'll definitely want to follow along before the campaign launches because if you do and you do decide to back this campaign, then you'll get the downloadable content added to the pledge in a physical version completely for free.